One of the things which never fails to shock and surprise me every time I read that incident of the finding of the child Jesus in the temple is the, the fact that Mary and Joseph never noticed that Jesus wasn't with them. For each one of them, there was an assumption that he was safe with them or with the caravan, the caravan being the large group of people that traveled, not the little thing with two wheels, um, as I thought it was <laughs> until quite recently. And in a day's worth of traveling, quite a large distance can be covered. We can really feel Jesus, uh, Mary and Joseph's heightened anxiety as the realization dawns on them that they can't find him anywhere. This is quite the home alone moment, isn't it? That realization. And having, to, having watched it yesterday, I can say, safely say it's that uh, heightened anxiety, you can feel it. And then there is, of course, after a bit of searching, which lasted three days, the response of Jesus to his parents when they made that journey back. Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? It always makes me think, what a response. Can you imagine your children making that, that same response to you? His father's affairs. They didn't understand what, of course, what that meant. His father's affairs, of course, see their foundations within the context of the temple, the place where God himself dwells. His father's affairs, another phrase, of course, we can use for Jesus' ministry and mission in the world, come from a place of dialogue and encounter with the Father. It's something that's profoundly rooted here, in the temple, in that dialogue and encounter with the Father. We can see then and understand why a little bit later on Jesus gets so angry in the temple and drives out the money lenders and those selling their wares. For Jesus, the temple was a place of prayer and dialogue with his father, not a marketplace to sell things. And it's this subject of dialogue which was the basis of Pope Francis's Ubi et Orbi message yesterday to the world. Our Holy Father reflected, the word became flesh in order to dialogue with us. God does not desire to carry on a monologue, but a dialogue, that dialogue. And we see that in Jesus himself, don't we, as we reflect upon the incident in the temple, as Jesus himself sat in the temple, dialoguing with the doctors of the law, expounding those skills of authentic dialogue listening, asking questions, making a response to those things, and of course not forgetting an essential ingredient in dialogue, silence, something absolutely necessary for dialogue to be real and to flourish. For without silence, we can never make room for the other to speak. The opening prayer of our Mass uh, today moves us from contemplating the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph to reflecting upon our own families, that God was pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family for our imitation. St. Paul VI described the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph as the school where we begin to understand the life of Jesus, the first place where we learn the foundations of our faith. 
and it is from this school where we were able to really learn what family life is. A communion of love, Paul VI describes it so beautifully. Lost my bit now. Today Jesus offers us those same skills of dialogue as, those, as the Holy Family, those listening skills, asking questions, being able to be comfortable as we make our own contribution in the development of our family life. And of course, allowing the silence to become the foundation of prayer rather than simply the absence of noise as family dynamics are tried and tested in our modern society, both from within as well as from without. Each of us as family members are called to make our contribution. As you leave later on our celebration of Mass, I invite you to make a short pilgrimage to our nativity scene and pray for your family. Amen.